A horrific zombie virus breaks out of a lab in Britain and infects everyone, killing thousands of people. Spoiler ahead, watch out. Don and his wife Alice, along with a few other survivors named Jeff, Sally, Jacob and Karen, were able to find protection at an isolated cottage in the countryside. Then, suddenly, the survivors heard someone aggressively beating on their door and asking for help while they were having lunch. Don is hesitant to open the door to strangers, but Alice explains that it is a child's voice and convinces him to do so. The kid had come all the way from a nearby town. His parents turned into zombies and have been hunting him with a crowd. Karen opens just a tiny part of the window to take a look outside, but even this small opening allows the zombies to hear her coming. They break through the window and the wood and grasp her arm, biting her. When Jacob rescues her and pulls her back, Karen transforms into a zombie. Don then emerges from behind her, strikes her in the head, and kills her, allowing Jacob to escape. Don stays to keep the oncoming zombies at bay so the others can escape as well. The boy and Alice escape down the corridor, but when the zombies start to breach the other windows, they head upstairs, where the boy runs so quickly that Alice can't keep up with him. The zombies pursue Jeff, Sally, and Jacob as they attempt to escape through the cottage barn. Jeff keeps the door open so that the other two may run, but it is soon kicked down, leading Jeff to die quickly from the zombie attack. Sally cries as she sees her husband being eaten, and the zombies take advantage of this pause to capture her as well. Because he lacks the strength to drag her out, Jacob has to release her in order to lock in the door and make his escape via the window. Don destroys several zombies downstairs, but he also needs to start running after losing his weapon in the fight. He rushes to Alice when he hears her scream, but Alice is unwilling to leave without the kid. Alice eventually locates the boy hiding, however. A zombie intervenes to separate them from Don. Alice screams for aid, but Don is too terrified, so he closes the door and escapes through the window, leaving his wife and the child with the zombies inside the house. Don rushes across the farmland, ignoring Alice at the window, while zombies chase him. When he eventually shows up at the river dock, Jacob is trying to get away in a motorboat. To start the motor, Don boards the boat first. However, Jacob slips and falls into the water, where he is bitten by a zombie. Don eventually starts the motorboat to kill Jacob with its propeller blades. In quarantine for 15 days following the outbreak in Britain, the virus had wiped out the entire nation by day 28. After five days, the zombies start to starve to death, and 11 weeks later, NATO forces are sent by the USA to London to begin the cleanup process. After 18 weeks, Britain is officially judged virus-free, and by week 24, reconstruction gets underway with the return of all those Britons who managed to flee the outbreak of disease. Dr. Scarlett gets annoyed by the group of children returning from their school trip on the newest aircraft because she believes it is too early for young people to be exposed. She meets Tammy and Andy, who happen to be Don and Alice's children. After their health is verified, the siblings board the train and see the military disposing of poisonous waste and burning down victims until they arrive in District 1, where they are reconnected with their father Don. Don describes the zombie attack on the cottage to them, but he lies and claims he observed Alice being killed, so he was unable to help. The following morning, Andy and Tammy wait for Don to leave for work before secretly leaving the apartment. Doyle sees them from his vantage point atop a roof. He tells his crew that the sibling runs through an empty area of London. Tammy finds the keys to a delivery bike outside the pizzeria and is shocked to discover rotting bodies around. They observe all the destruction created by the zombie attack, as well as the additional graves that have been constructed in the last few months as they go across the city. When they finally get to their former residence, they gather some of their old possessions and grab a photo of Alice. Andy discovers Alice as he walks into the attic and looks at herself in the mirror. Andy is initially pleased when Alice quickly gives her kid a hug, but soon Alice begins to give him an excessively tight hug. At that point, Alice is taken into custody and the children are taken away by the military. Then Alice is tied to a stretcher and questioned by Scarlett, but refuses to answer any of them. After completing the tests, Scarlett verifies that Alice is infected with the virus and can spread it to others, but that she is somehow resistant. This suggests that she may have the key to creating a vaccine, but the authorities wish to have her killed before she can spread the infection and instruct her to conduct her testing on the dead person afterward. The siblings are in quarantine in the meantime, and when Don visits them, they scold him for lying. Don sneaks past the military guard to visit Alice in the isolation chamber because he feels bad. He says he's sorry for running and that it was an overwhelming attack. Alice says, I love you. Don gives his wife a kiss and Don contracts her saliva right away and turns into a zombie. Alice is scared, but she's stuck there and unable to escape from Dawn, who thrashes her, bites her neck and finally crushes her eyeballs. Don uses his bite to attack and kill many guards before fleeing the hospital and infecting District 1 with the infection. The higher authorities move to a safety bunker and implement a lockdown known as Code Red as soon as they hear what occurred. The kids soon find themselves amid a frantic group of people attempting to flee. After being driven into a safe room garage with other citizens, Andy becomes separated from Tammy and Scarlett. Just before the district's power goes out, the soldiers lock them all inside for their safety. Andy then discovers his bloodied zombie father. 
Not only is Don biting people, but zombies are multiplying and spreading around the area. Andy makes it through the crowd and crawls away, hiding under the ventilation system. The zombies are able to escape and spread the virus when the remaining individuals. Enough emergency lights are on in the streets for the soldiers to be able to go to the hospital while the snipers can cover them. Andy emerges from the vents right into the center of the mayhem as the troops turn up the fire and an outbreak of violence breaks out. Fortunately, Doyle is keeping an eye on the sector and won't kill any survivors. He then kills every zombie in Andy's immediate vicinity, including the one that comes uncomfortably close to killing him, allowing the young child to flee with the other survivors. When a few zombies get to the roofs and start murdering other snipers, Andy then gets back together with Tammy and Scarlett and tells his sister about their father. Doyle then appears and offers to help the survivors leave the location before the military murders them as well. The group uses the back door to exit the building before cautiously making their way through the streets, always staying in the shadows to avoid being noticed by other security personnel. Doyle delays the group's progress and uses the radio to distract Flynn's attention as he flies over with the helicopter before directing them to proceed ahead once more. Then Flynn breaks the dreadful news. District 1 and 4 minutes will be completely bombed by the military. As the group is heading into the park, one of the guys is killed by a sniper. While the gang scrambles to hide, the sniper never stops firing, killing a few more survivors in the process. Now, she, the siblings, Doyle, and a guy by the name of Sam are the only ones remaining. When Sam declines Doyle's request to run in zigzag to divert the gunman so Doyle is able to kill him, Andy leaves in his stead. This allows Doyle enough time to kill the man with a single blow. Subsequently, Andy hides behind yet another wall, and to his surprise, his father is in close range. The group then flees District 1 as quickly as possible, scaling a fence to escape before the area is bombed. They escape just in time to save the building from blowing up too. With time, a great number of zombies that were spared from the attack are making their way into London, breaking into every building in search of victims and spreading damage everywhere. After a few more incidents and Doyle's death, a group of zombies is seen running in the direction of the Eiffel Tower, indicating that the infection has now gone outside of Britain. We really hope you enjoyed today's recap of 28 Weeks Later 2007. Please leave a comment below on what you loved about the movie and why. Be sure to like the video and please don't forget to support our channel by subscribing so you don't miss any amazing content. Until next time, light, camera, action. We look forward to seeing you in our next video.